What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So last episode, we set up a villager spawner. Yeah, and we were able to spawn in some villagers here. Uh, we were able to move the spawner around with this moving wand, which is super awesome, and we can spawn in new villagers <laughs> if we need them. Honestly, I don't need any of these other villagers right now. Uh, we... Yeah, we can spawn them in whenever we want to. So one of the villagers that we did get was this guy right here. This is a farmer villager. This guy right here will trade wheat, potatoes, carrots, uh, and pumpkins, looks like, uh, for emeralds. Looks like also melons if we get some of those. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I was trying to unlock further things with this farmer. I bought some cakes off him trying to get him to unlock for the recipes, but I wasn't able to do that just yet. So I'm not sure if he has any other ones, but we are now able to get emeralds really easy in comparison to what we were doing before with mining for them. So yes, this villager right here specifically, it's a really, really good one. So we're going to hang on to him for a little while. We'll let him roam around or do whatever it is villagers do. So we were working on trying to get emeralds a while ago. <laughs> We've been working towards this for a little bit of time now to try and get ourselves a quarry. Yeah, quarries in this mod pack are a little difficult to come by. So if we wanted to do the quantum quarry, for instance, we need the digital miner, which requires all of this stuff, draconic energy core, which means we're going to have to be doing the draconic evolution awakened draconium stuff, right? So that's kind of far down the road. We're not even close to that at this point in time. Uh, the other option is to use the RF tools builder with the quarry card. And in order to do this, we're going to need some more Draconic Evolution stuff, but this doesn't require having the whole infusing thing set up, which is way better in my opinion, but it does require a lot of nether stars. So yeah, we're able to easily enough farm the Wither Boss, right? Uh, or at least kill the Wither Boss. We still need to get a way to farm up Wither Skeleton Skulls to get these nether stars, but we also need these Vibrant Crystals, which required Emerald. Yeah, each one of these Draconic Cores requires four of those, and yeah, it looks like we need 14 of those, I think. Four here. No, I guess uh, there's 12 of those, but we I think we need a total of 14 Nether Stars. So yeah, it's a lot of stuff that goes into this, but yeah, we're, we're getting to the point now where we should be able to easily be able to start tackling this stuff. Uh, Draconium Inga is another thing we haven't been able to do yet. If we were into Blood Magic, we can take the Draconium Dust, and turn it directly into the ingot, but I think for right now, we're probably going to end up going with this route for the draconium that we need. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but it will get the job done until we get into blood magic. We currently have six draconium dust, so we're going to have to figure out a way to get more of that stuff. Yeah, so there's a little bit of things that we're going to have to work on here in order to progress through this mod pack. Uh, so getting the emeralds, that's the easy part. <laughs> we're going to have to work on getting nether stars next which means we're gonna have to get ourselves some wither skeleton skulls uh now that we're able to move spawners around with our moving wand and we have the other spawner changer that i made last episode this guy right here we can make ourselves a skeleton spawner since i haven't been able to find a skeleton dungeon we can make ourselves a skeleton spawner out of a blaze spawner put into the nether and farm them that way. I think we can also turn that skeleton spawner into a restorb spawner and spawn them faster using extra utilities too. So these are things we're going to work on here next. All right, guys. Well, the easy part was going outside at nighttime, finding a skeleton, right clicking on it with a spawner changer. I just also went to the nether and then I filled up our moving wand with another blaze spawner. I think that's probably one of the only closest ones that's nearby other than the one that's like right in the nether where we're using the farm blaze anyway uh so we can place this down and do the spawner change around to change it to a skeleton so let's do that so there's blaze it's now a skeleton all right so now we have a skeleton spawner um pretty sure we can turn that into a restorb spawner and then put it into the nether pretty sure that we can do this let's try that uh so we need to get ourselves some uh, uh is a drop of evil evil or is it the other dust I can't remember if it's the withered dust or the drop of evil you click on it. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try both of those. It might be the drop of evil. We'll just kind of put it over here. There's that. Drop of evil. Ah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, that's all you got to do. So now it's a restorbed mob spawner. If we place that down, it says type skeleton. We'll say 
redstone is on. Okay, cool. So let's pick this thing back up. I think it retains its data rate. Oh, no. Every time I place it down, I have to set that. Okay, so good to know. Uh, so we need to get ourselves a lever so we can turn this thing on and off. Just grab one of those, put these things away. So I want to make sure that this thing will, in fact, spawn with a skeleton. So we're going to go into the nether real quick, find a nice dark spot, a uh, nice dark flat spot, <laughs> place this down, and just verify. Pretty sure it does. Otherwise, I might have just made a mistake, and we'll have to go get ourselves another vanilla skeleton spawner to put into the nether. But, yeah, I'm almost positive this should just work. All right, so maybe just right up here by that mushroom should be fine. Yeah, over here. We'll turn on our night vision so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so that looks good. Place that here. We'll say redstone on lever. Is that going to work? Hopefully. It doesn't appear to have any indication nearby this thing is actually spawning anything or it's turned on. I guess we just have to wait to see. Oh, yeah. Whoa. I forgot these things are super fast. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Uh, We got coal. We got wither dust. Those are, in fact, wither skeletons, and we are withered. Okay, so easy. We got that under control. So now we need to get ourselves a room to spawn these things in here in the nether. Uh, we need to get our way to kill them, collect the stuff. Yeah, and then we should start collecting. If nothing else, we'll get the withered ribs where we can turn skeleton skulls into. But I'm pretty sure that we should still be able to get ourselves... Uh, the wither skeleton skulls off those things if we use the diamond spike. All right, gassed. Okay, <laughs> he doesn't want anything to do with this. All right, cool. So anyway, let's go ahead. We will make ourselves a new diamond spike. We will set up a room somewhere here. I might just make a path like going this direction or something. Um... Yeah, just set up like a little room or something that we can spawn them in and kill them. Anyway, I'm going to start working on this and then we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. So I've been doing some stuff off camera here. Uh, I opened up a new section out of our <laughs> cobblestone hut here in the nether. Yeah, and I made a big old box out of nether rack. This is chiseled nether rack. And I forget the flavor. Dark red is what it's called. Yeah, so we made ourselves a box. And inside this box, I put in a spawner room. We got our restarb spawner over there. Our uh, redstone conduit. Yeah, this setup is almost exactly the same as the other spawners that we have in the overworld. We have the vector plates pushing the mobs to the 3x3 three three in the center. Um, I still need to hook up the redstone signal on the top of this. We'll put a lever up there. We'll continue the conduit out to a place where I can flip a lever over here, which would probably be a little bit more convenient. Uh, yeah, there's still some more things that we need to do with this. But yeah, uh, Builder's Wand was very, very useful for all of this. Uh, I had to go to the deep dark to farm up some more diamonds. Yeah, we really did not have enough diamonds to make the uh, the one diamond spike. It costs a lot, to be honest. All right, so let's break this out. We'll get this other diamond spike put into place down here. All right, so diamond spike is going to go, I think, let's see. It should be able to go at this level right, well, I don't really want it facing that direction. Not that it matters. I just like the way it looks when it's facing <laughs> upwards. So let's see. Is there a way? No, I'm going to break everything if I do that. Uh, so we'll place that here. We'll place that here. Okay, I think that's better. I need to get out my single block pick instead of using our hammer on this thing. Yeah, that'll be fine. So previously in our other contraptions, we had a vacuum chest down here, which works pretty well for doing what we want to do. This time we're going to do something different. I made an ender hopper. Uh, this is from Dark Utilities, the same mod that makes these fast vector plates. It's a really nice thing. It'll pick up uh, within a certain range any entity that's around. Yeah, so we can kind of just put that on the floor. You can't even see it. I guess this thing could literally be on the floor too. It doesn't need to be up one block. So we could raise this whole floor up one. But anyway, uh, yeah, if it finds any floating entities in a certain radius it'll just pick those up and put into whatever the connected inventory is which is probably going to be this chest um so you know what let's go ahead and just move the floor up one we'll just do that now we'll say this is going to be the the bottom here we'll have to put the vector plates on here to push the mobs into the spike but i think that should be just fine so 
if we go down one more, we can remove that, put a chest here, and then put the ender hopper on this thing. Shift right click it. I think if you shift right click or right click, there's a way you can see the area of effect. This thing. Maybe there's like a wrench or something you got to click this thing with. I don't remember. Uh, magnet, let's turn this off. Let's see if this ender hopper works. So if I place some nether rack around, it'll just pick it up, right? So now it's gone. So that's really cool. Maybe I'll just go ahead and break out the blocks around this thing. Now it will pick up above, below, and side to side, but I don't remember what the range is. I just know it works pretty well and I should be able to grab anything that lands on top of this spike, which we've seen problems before. So we should have zero loss with this, which will be pretty awesome. In fact, we could move this up one more block. Now I'm looking at this, couldn't we? We could put that right on top, uh, or I guess right below uh, the spike. I think that might be better overall. That way we don't have to move this down as far. So do that. We'll put the chest right here. And then we'll put the ender hopper on the chest. There we go. Yeah, that should work just fine. So that is directly below this and anything in this area, it'll pick up and place in this chest. I think that is really good. Okay, so we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with that chest. We'll worry about that later for now. I'll just go ahead and fill this back in and try and get out from underneath here. Something like that should work. And then we'll put more of this blood stuff here. Dark red, dark red. Yeah, some of the blocks from Netherrack were called blood. So I kind of get those confused a little bit. But anyway, yeah, we'll place these uh, vector plates like so. So no matter where the mobs fall, uh, they'll get pushed over into the spike and the spike should do its work. All right, cool. So that is that all in place. So yeah, I'll go ahead and figure out what we're going to do with this. I do kind of want it ran over to a lever so I don't have to run over and go up here and figure out how to turn that thing on and off. We have plenty of these redstone conduits, so that shouldn't be an issue. And then I also made some more of the item conduits so we can get the items out of that chest and filtered into drawers or whatever we're going to store them in. Okay, well, I got a little bit more to work on here, so I'll continue uh, making progress, and then we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, well, this is the next day. Unfortunately, I ran out of time to finish this video yesterday. Uh, I just got done reinstalling this gaming PC and I recorded the first bit a little bit after that But yeah, it just got too late for me to finish the video uh, But anyway, I got some conduit facades here and I painted it with the dark red the same as this cobblestone here So we can fill in some of these gaps uh, So yeah, the uh, conduit we have here for the redstone runs along the ceiling like so I don't think I'm gonna have enough of these facades to finish this up uh, but yeah, I've made a painting machine, and then we had some of those ancient capacitors, whatever those things are called. Uh, can I place it there? Yeah, there we go. Uh, some of those capacitors, <laughs> one of them said incredibly hiding, and I'm pretty sure incredibly hiding is the best that you can get, or at least hiding means the best one for the painting machine. Anyway, so I ended up putting that in there, and yeah, these kind of facades end up uh, being produced very very quickly. Yeah, unfortunately, I just didn't have enough there Let's go back and take a look at this real quick So you guys can see how fast this goes because I was kind of impressed to be honest because I've used painting machines before And I've never seen them go this fast. Actually, we need to go to the upstairs one uh, I don't know how many more of these things we need like six. I can't imagine it'll be more than six So anyway, uh, I rearranged these machines before our precision sawmill was in the ground one block underneath this painting machine so yeah, kind of move these around. Uh, but anyway, we have the magic capacitor here. It says premium hungry, incredibly hiding, incredibly insatiable wonder capacitor. So this one, the hiding, I believe, is what's really good for the painting machine. So you can see here it says max 162 RF per tick, and it holds 814,000 RF, which is a lot. So anyway, we put that in there, and it goes pretty quick. I think that's faster than I've ever seen one of these painting machines go before. So I was quite impressed with the speed of it. Uh, so yeah, it's very nice that we're able to do that. So yeah, we can go ahead and get back to the nether here and finish up the conduits here. Uh, so yeah, we have the lever, or I guess we have the conduit running up to the ceiling, down the wall, and then we have the lever kind of where I wanted to place that before. So it's easy access. One, two, three, four, five. I mean one too many, but that's fine. It's better to have too many than not enough, right? I think so. And there we go. Now you can't even tell it's in the wall. So I can flip this lever and that will power this. You can see the, the wire is now red. 
I guess we could put some more of the conduit facades on that conduit there so nothing can spawn above the spawner. I've seen that before when you have spawners like this with the conduit. Since that doesn't take up a full block, like the monsters will spawn like part way on there and kind of hang out on the top. And then if you put the facades all the way up there, it turns into a solid block and that can't happen. Yeah, there we go. So now we get a wither skeleton spawning. But yeah, these are going pretty slow, unfortunately. Um, I kind of made a little axis way down here and we can see what's in the chest. We can see we're getting all the sorts of stuff, but no wither skeleton skulls yet. I really hope that that will drop, but it's very hard to tell with how slow this thing is spawning. So the next step is we need to speed this thing up. Now we've seen that before, how to speed these up. In fact, we put a few speed upgrades, I think, in our witch spawner. Or maybe I did that off camera. I can't remember. But yeah, we sped up our witch spawner, I think, with like six speed upgrades. Uh, the problem is each one of those does start taking more GP and we're running low on our GP. Uh, I guess I don't have any speed upgrades in here. I got a lot of random swords and tools. I need to get rid of those. So speed upgrade. Uh, yeah, each one of those we can put up to 20 and each one costs one GP. So we'll need 20 more GP to fully max that out. If we look at this thing here, we can see that we are using 56 out of 73. Now, if I want to use the resonator for anything, that uses eight more. So that'll put us up to, uh, what, like 64 out of 73? That's not going to be enough for 20. We really should look at getting ourselves more GP. Uh, a good way to do that, probably the best way to do it, is to get ourselves a dragon mill. A dragon mill will... It says power given 1.0 GP. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Extra... Is it really only give one GP? I thought it was supposed to give like 60 or something. I wonder, did they nerf it in this pack? Oh man, I didn't even bother to look at that before because let's see if we look, oh my goodness, it's hard for me to find this. Let's search for mill, here we go. So it says two GP went adjacent to lava, two GP went over fire, power given 1.0 GP. I wonder if that changes when you put the dragon egg on top i'm not entirely sure now i'm curious <laughs> i might have to go into a test world and check it out but anyway the dragon egg mill uh does require two nether stars stone burnt ender pearls and these other things here uh redstone gear that's very easy for us to do the eye of redstone though is a little bit more expensive that requires res resonating redstone crystals which we have and these infernal tears which is stuff that we've been getting from mobs but yeah check it out it requires an empty void tier that was one of those things we got from the stronghold and you can make those with gas tier, slime, pearl, lapis, and nebulous heart. We have plenty of those from Ender our Enderman farm. So that's not a big deal. Infernal Claw is another thing you have to make, but that does require slime pearls as well. Uh, witch hats we have and molten cores. I think we might have enough in our system. And then we also need the salamander's eye, which is nebulous, hard, molten cores. And then frozen cores, which come from killing snowmen. So we can easily do some of these things. Yeah, now I'm really curious if <laughs> the dragon mill... It's not going to work for us. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's weird that it only says 1.0 GP. Hmm. I think I will have to test that out in a test world just to be sure. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I made a test world to check out if the Dragon Mill does work or if it only produces 1 GP. No, it does work. Uh, you place it down and you place the Dragon Egg on there. It gives you like 500 GP or something. Okay, so that is what we were really concerned about. Uh, so we need to get ourselves the two stars, right? So we have to kill two more wither bosses for this. Then we have to go collect the egg and then figure out how we're going to do the uh, slime pearls. But we'll worry about that when we get there. So yeah, uh, we do have 11 skeleton skulls. And then we had 16 withered ribs from all the uh, wither skeleton I've been fighting. Uh, so we are able to get ourselves exactly the amount of wither skeleton skulls that we need in order to get those two more stars. So I think... I think we're ready to go here so we'll grab some soul sand i'll have to go make sure we get enough of the buffs and things that we need um what do we have for potions here we have potions of instant healing which we didn't have to use before but i'll take it with me anyway uh potion of regeneration and then we had potion of regeneration two i think that's pretty much all we need uh potion of strength would be useful to kill the wither boss faster so i'll probably end up making some more of those so we'll need some blaze powder for that uh, redstone, or do we want, no, I think we'll do strength too. So blaze powder, glowstone, we'll need nether wart and then glass. 
bottles. Yeah, we got plenty of those. Cool. All right, well, go and get these preparations made. I will just uh, wreck a couple of wither bosses. We've seen it already before. It's not that difficult for us. I'll make sure all of our armor is ready to go and all that kind of stuff. Yep, let me go ahead and get those nether stars going. We'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I just got done killing the wither boss twice. Got our two nether stars here, and I went to go warp downstairs. I was like, wait, what is this? <laughs> we can see our berries warp from here. But if we go downstairs and we look over there, it's nowhere to be found. I don't, I just don't get how that thing works. Yeah, I think somebody was saying in the comments that it has to do with the amount of blocks that you're passing through. And then I think somebody else said if it has to go through water, it doesn't work. I'm not really sure, but I did see that down here it works. Up there it doesn't. And if I move over to a certain position, like closer to this, it disappears. I, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. If you guys do know for sure, let me know in the comments because I am kind of interested and seeing why that is working in some places, but not others. It's just really weird to me. Anyway, uh, so now that we got our two additional nether stars, we put all these extra potions away that we're not using anymore. And all the cobblestone I was using to fill back in the hole down there. Okay, so now that we got those, we can start working towards this. Now, what do we have? We have the stone burnt already. Ender pearl and the stars. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, we need to get ourselves four more redstone torches that we can make this little guy. All right, so all the easy stuff is now done. Okay, cool. So we need to make ourselves this eye of redstone. And yeah, we saw that before. So we need the salamander's eye. So that is eye of ender, molten core. Uh, so we are missing the frozen core and the eye of ender. So eye of ender, pretty easy for us to make at this point in the game. So we'll make one of those and we'll get uh, the salamander's eye mostly done. Okay, so now we need to get ourselves a frozen core. And as I said before, we needed to get ourselves snowmen. I don't think we have any snow at all. How are we doing on pumpkins? We only have two pumpkins. Hmm. Okay. So in order to make a snowman, yeah, you have to put the pumpkin head on it. I can't remember. Is it this version where you can use shears to get the pumpkin back? Or is that a later version? This is 1.10 Minecraft. I don't remember if we could do in this one. Otherwise, we can make a bunch of pumpkins and get the pumpkin back. Or a bunch of snowmen and get the pumpkin back. Let's find out. All right, so we need to find ourselves a spot that has snow. We'll have J look at our menu. Or, I'm sorry, our mini-map. Uh, yeah, it looks like over here to the west is going to be some snow-capped mountains. Uh, so we can go this way. Uh, which one is it? G for glider. All right, so we'll fly up here real quick. And fly over to our snow-capped mountains. Grab a little bit of snow. Yep, it is nighttime. I probably should have slept till day. Hopefully we won't be bothered by too many monsters over here. I see a spider. I'll just get rid of the spider real quick. Get out of here, spider. All right, so a little snow. Yeah, pretty easy for us to get this stuff. Oh, we got a zombie. One of the cyberware ones. Is glowing for some reason. Not sure <laughs> what all the effects are. People are saying in the comments though that I should look into the cyberware. Uh, we were looking at that the other day, and I was looking at the eyes and stuff, and somebody warned me not to remove eyes that I could potentially uh, go blind and not be able to figure out where I was and how to get stuff back again. Yeah, I don't want to be blind in the game. That's for sure. We have to deal with that enough with the hardcore darkness mod. So if I turn off night vision, yeah, you can't see anything except for some lit up areas around like beehives and whatnot. Yeah, so I definitely don't want to do that. But I, I hear there's some pretty cool things that you can get from that mod. So we'll probably be checking that out here pretty soon. But I'll have to do a little bit of research on it since I don't know anything about that particular mod. All right, I think we should have enough snow to get. Yeah, I think we have enough. I guess we could turn some of these into snow blocks too. Save a little bit of inventory space. There we go. There's... There's a stack of snow. All right, I think we're good on that. Cool. I'll grab the rest of these snowballs. Uh, let's go, yeah, turn the glider back on. Oh, I guess I never turned it off. Let's go back to the base over here, and I can easily, oh, I was holding shift. I can easily just use the staff of traveling to get back. Okay, so let's make a snowman. Again, I'm not sure if we can do that in this particular version of Minecraft or if that's a later one. I feel like it's a later one, but we'll try it anyway. So if I give you this, oh, I can use shears. Oh, I thought I gave you the pumpkin back. Isn't it supposed to give you the pumpkin back? Isn't that the point of that? Hmm. 
Okay, well, anyway, we got a snowman over here making us a whole lot of snow, <laughs> making a mess. Uh, we will have to get some pumpkins farmed up. Yeah, I'll just, I guess I'll remove some things here, use our watering can and farm up some of those. So let me get to that and then we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so I farmed up some pumpkins, right? And we have our snow blocks and I placed down some snow here so we can make ourselves some snowmen. So the idea here is to get ourselves the frozen cores. All right, so let's see if we can do this. So we have our looting three sword. We'll just boop these guys. We got anything yet? I guess I'll sort my inventory so it'll be easier to see. Uh, just some solidified experience, it looks like. Now, the frozen cores aren't, like, super common, but we should be getting them from these guys, I do believe. Mmm, no luck yet. I guess we can try again. We have plenty of the snow. I'll end up having to set up a snowman snow farm, I think, which will be fine. Or we can just go out and do like we did before and just collect it from the wild. But, yeah, I think the hardest part of this is just collecting the pumpkins. Uh, another thing we could do is we could collect these guys in a soul vial, right? And then we could make a powered spawner out of them. I think I've done that in the past before. Uh, it might be an easier way to collect <laughs> the frozen cores that we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. There's one. All right. So we got a, a little bit. We need one more of those things. So it's going to take a minute before we get all of these guys going. I guess I'll make some more snow blocks out of that stuff. There we go. All right. Cool. I fell down here. I don't want to be down here with the snowman. <laughs> we'll try one more row. Hopefully, we'll get the uh, the final frozen core that we're looking for. Okay. And then one more time. Get wrecked, snowman. Did I get it? No. All right. So, I'll just do this a few more times until we get it, and then we'll be back. Well, we're once again back in the nether, guys. We need to get ourselves more stuff. So, yes, we were able to get the frozen cores. Yeah, not that big of a deal. Just had to kill a few more snowmen. Uh, but now we need these infernal tears, which require the empty void tier, which requires slime pearls. So the only way to get those is as it drops from slimes. Uh, drops from slimes and magma cubes. Now, I don't know if that's blue slimes or just the vanilla slimes. So we're going to come here to the nether. Over there is a magma cube island. Make sure our glider is on. Yeah, we have a magma cube island. We were over here farming, I think. Did we farm magma cubes here before? <laughs> I can't remember. Or were we just here for the slime? It might have just been the slime. But anyway, uh, I know magma cubes will spawn here given enough time. Maybe I just got to back away and be like, you know, a little bit further than 20 blocks away or whatever. Um, yeah, so... That's going to be my next goal is try and get these guys to spawn in, get them aggroed, and then kill them. Hello, Mr. Imp. <laughs> um, I might get lucky and just see some natural spawned ones around here. Uh, not right now. I'm not seeing any, though. I'm going to take care of this blaze before it becomes a problem. Come here. Nope, nope, nope. All right, it's going to become a problem. <laughs> Dang thing. Anyway, so yes, I'm going to be looking for magma cubes. That Oh, I'm on the... Uh, on the magma blocks here. I'm going to be looking for magma cubes. I'm going to try and kill them. Try and get those slime pearls. It might be a thing. We're going to have to set up a spawner specifically for them. To try and get these slime pearls. Because if I remember correctly. Uh, the slime pearls are one of those items that are kind of a rare drop. I don't even know. Does it say on there what it, the drop rate was? We should probably take a look at that real quick. 10%. Yeah. So after killing 10 of these things. I don't even know if that's a small one. It might be 10 of the big ones. Well, we've got a chance of getting one. Uh, wait, that said affected by looting? I didn't read that fully. Let's go back one more time. Uh, affected by looting. Okay, so both of those are affected by looting. Nice. Um, yeah, see, over here, this island's got a bunch of them. I might just go over there and say hi. Yeah, let's kill these guys. See if we can get a slime pearl together. All right. Got a big boy. Okay, I heard something sizzle in there. I probably don't want these guys to die in the lava. I do have my magnet on, though, so if they do drop any of the slime pearls, we should get them. Now, I'm noticing these guys are killing themselves. Are, are they suffocating in the slime blocks? I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Yeah, I think they must be suffocating in the slime blocks. I might want to get rid of those, but I don't know if those are affecting uh, the spawn of these guys or what. I think... Nope, I did not get one yet. I thought I got one. Hmm. 
Let's get rid of these slime blocks around here. I definitely, yeah, they're just killing themselves on it. That's too bad. I definitely don't want them killing themselves without me killing them with my sword because if they die without me getting the slime pearls and it's worthless, right? Anyway, uh, I'm gonna sit here and see if I can kill a few of these and get a slime pearl. Otherwise, we might have to take another excursion and set up a spawner specifically for these slimes. I don't know. Anyway, we'll be back, guys. Well, all right, guys. Well, I spent a bunch of time in the nether trying to get slime pearls. It didn't work out. I ended up collecting a lot of the magma slime blocks, though, that were the magma slimes kept dying on. Yeah, and some congealed blood blood blocks, I guess. Uh, so we got some of those. I got some magma creams from killing those slimes. And then I also found some nether draconium ore. So I guess it's not a total loss the time spent there. But we didn't get the slime pearls. And that is absolutely needed for this recipe. So I think what we're going to end up having to do is making ourselves some kind of a slime spawner in order to get this done. I kind of feel like the green slimes are going to have a higher chance of dropping than the, than the magma slimes. But I don't know. Uh, we could try and find ourselves, what is it, a swamp at nighttime? Uh, green slimes are natural spawn there. Uh, we could find ourselves, oh, oops, no, I won't hit this one. Uh, a swamp, yeah, like over here, hang out there, get ourselves a slime, or I guess make ourselves another spawner changer and make another vanilla spawner, or maybe even try and restorb it. I don't know, maybe that's an option that we could do. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> trying to get those slime pearls, it's proving to be a little bit more difficult than I was thinking it was going to be initially. That's a little too bad. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to wrap the episode up here for today. Uh, I had a good time getting all these things done that we needed to do. But yeah, unfortunately, we still got more things to do before we are completely done with it. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.